the week on Green 960. And now, Sebastian Coons. Well, all puns about shooting the moon aside, it was a pretty exciting week at the Ames Research Facility in Mountain View. Shepherding spacecraft impact. Stations report LOS. Well, it's hard to tell what we saw there. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> this is a great lesson uh, for NASA. It's a new tool in our toolbox for how we can continue to explore. It was a different kind of moon landing, one with some pretty explosive potential, too. And as far as live streamed events on the Internet go, it's pretty much in the top ten. So here's a zoomed-in uh, region of that. So you're still looking at the South Pole. You can see several of the uh, nearby craters are labeled. And then you also see the expected plume area that's labeled um, there towards the bottom. And I want to call your attention to, there's a very bright sort of ridge line. Jennifer Heldman is one of the researchers for the L-Cross program at NASA. She says the cooperation from at least 16 telescopes and viewing stations all over the world and some in orbit are going to make the data they collected that much more useful and robust. We brought this team together under the umbrella of observing L-Cross. And so everyone's been working together. Uh, we're looking at each other's data, sharing data, collaborating with the spacecraft and all the other space orbiting assets that have collected data as well because that's how we're going to learn the most from this uh, from this unique experiment that we just did. Many of the gathered reporters were troubled by the lack of any apparent visual excitement in the crash on the moon. Anthony Colaprete is Elcross principal investigator. He says it might not have looked as dazzling as the computer animation that came out before the real crash kind of maybe got some folks' hopes up, maybe thought it would look like the Genesis video from Star Trek II, but Colaprit says they did get lots of data, real data, and it's the data they wanted. Now they just have to analyze it. What those little blips mean, I'm just glad they're there, honestly, because that's uh, it could have been a flat black line, and uh, it wasn't, and we're not the only ones who saw interesting blips, so we just got to go back and see what it is. It could be, honestly, it could be purely instrument. I don't think that flash is. Uh, I, I'm anxious to go back and see if I see an OH emission line, an H2O plus line, a sodium line, a whatever. Um, so we just got to get into it. Just haven't yet. Mike Wargo, the chief lunar scientist for NASA, agreed. You can tell by everything that we've heard here that you've been drinking from a fire hose. Wargo says it'll take some time to fully examine and assemble the data from these 16 plus observation stations, but it's that very teamwork that highlights just how great efforts like this can go. Really the one thing that I think really stands out here is this is NASA at its very best. What you're seeing here is exploration and science working together to provide great information for both. This is going to change the way we look at the moon scientifically and inform uh, our abilities to and our planning for continuing to explore the solar system. And principal investigator Anthony Colaprete, when asked what they were looking for, said even the sky isn't the limit. We're looking for just about everything. We're going someplace we've never been before. So uh, we're primarily interested in what's the source of the hydrogen. So it could have been water, hydrated minerals, adsorbed water, organics, you know, who knows. Um, uh, but the fact that we see a sodium flash, wow, that's really interesting. NASA's trying to confirm a theory that water is hidden below the lunar surface. It would be a key resource if humans go back to the moon someday. Well, that's the program for this week. No kicker this week. John Scott went camping. I just can't seem to trap that guy. He'll be back next week with the kicker, however. As always, my thanks to Mark Van Gelder, to Valerie Grant, and to Jen Lloyd. Again, in the absence of Corey Callaward helping with the production of the week. As always, hit contact us at green960.com if you have stories or feedback. I'm Sebastian Kuntz. Join me next week at the same time for the news of the week on The Week. This is Green 960.